When reading financial statements, you need to determine how the company is doing. That is the purpose of ratios. I will first define what are ratios, discuss the four areas in a company you need to monitor, introduce the top level ratio to use, return on equity, break that ratio down into three component parts, profit margin, asset turnover, and financial leverage, and summarize at the end. Ratios are to companies what x-rays are to doctors. Ratios are tools to assess the company's financial health. A ratio is one number divided by another number. This also allows you to compare two companies that are different sizes because you can't compare gross numbers between two different sized companies. There are four areas of company health that you can monitor. Sales pricing is subject to competition and your ability to differentiate your product from competitors. The more you can differentiate, the more pricing power you have and the higher gross profit and profit margin percentages you can earn. Expense control monitors the size of the expenses relative to the sales they generate. Businesses incur expenses to receive benefits. For example, they expect advertising to increase sales, research and development to develop new products and increase sales, training to increase employee efficiency and reduce costs. The lower your expenses, the higher your profit. Asset management monitors how efficiently the company is using its assets. It must utilize assets efficiently to generate sales. You don't want too many assets because the idle assets lower the company's profitability. All assets must serve a purpose or be jettisoned. Asset financing monitors how the assets have been financed. You can only finance assets two ways. You can borrow, which carries a risk. The risk is if you do not pay, repay the loan, you can go bankrupt. Or you can issue stock or earn a profit, both of which are equity. Equity does not have to be repaid. Now you can pay a dividend, but it is entirely at the company's discretion. Likewise, you can repurchase stock, but again, it is entirely at the company's discretion. Equity therefore carries less risk than liabilities. The best single diagnostic tool is return on equity which is computed as follows. Profit, or net income, divided by stockholders' equity. Return on equity measures the return the company is earning on the resources the stockholders provided. An excellent return is 20%. Consider a bank savings account. You expect the savings account to earn a return, say 5%. If you deposit $1,000 in one year, you expect the company to grow by $50, 1,000 times 5%. So it is with a corporation. The stockholders invest money in the corporation and expect the corporation to earn a return, profit, on that money. Return on equity measures that return. Monitoring return on equity is just the start. If return on equity declines, you need to find out why by drilling down. You can expand return on equity into three component ratios, profit margin, asset turnover, and financial leverage. I'm going to use these diagrams to discuss the component ratios of return on equity. This shows assets and the way those assets are financed through liabilities or equity, and it shows sales and the expenses are subtracted from sales, leaving the profit or net income. Profit margin compares the profits earned from the sales. It compares the size of the profit box to the sales box. Profit margin is equal to profit divided by sales. You are striving to earn a high profit margin. Which profit margin would you want? The one on the left or the one on the right? Obviously, you would want to generate more profits from your sales, like the diagram on the right. Therefore, you want the profit, the top part of the fraction, to be big relative to the bottom part of the fraction. Asset turnover measures your ability to generate sales from your assets. Asset turnover is equal to sales divided by assets. You want a high asset turnover. In other words, you want to generate high sales from your assets. Consider the following diagram. Your assets generate a like amount of sales and a little sliver of profit. Now consider the diagram on the right, which from the same asset level generates much higher sales and profits. 
The more sales you have, the more profits you have as well. So therefore, you'd like to generate high sales from your assets or the diagram to the right. Asset turnover is equal to sales divided by assets. You want the top part of the fraction, sales, to be high relative to the bottom part of the fraction. Financial leverage measures how your assets are financed, through liabilities or through equity. Financial leverage is equal to assets divided by equity. The advantage of liabilities is that you can expand your assets without affecting the percentage ownership of each stockholder. Every time you increase equity by issuing stock, you reduce the percentage ownership of the existing stockholders. It's like admitting a new partner to a partnership. Everybody's share of the partnership declines. Therefore, a way to avoid diluting ownership is to expand assets with liabilities, which is the concept of financial leverage. However, the more liabilities you have, the riskier you are. Liabilities must be repaid, and the consequence of not repaying them is potential bankruptcy. Consider the diagram here. The company has financed its assets with more liabilities than equity. As a result, the company has high risk. Now consider the diagram on the right. The company is a less risky company because the liabilities and equity are roughly 50% each. Financial leverage is assets divided by equity. You want the equity to be roughly 50% of the assets. This would result in the financial leverage being 2. The assets would be twice as big as the equity, which means that the equity and the liabilities would each be 50% of the assets. Therefore, the return on equity measures profits compared to sales, sales compared to assets, and assets compared to equity. Return on equity is equal to profit divided by sales times sales divided by assets times assets divided by equity. The sales and the assets cancel out in the multiplication and you're left with profit divided by equity. In this module we have defined what are ratios, discussed the four areas you need to monitor, and introduced return on equity and its component ratios, profit margin, asset turnover, and financial leverage. In the next module, we will apply what we have learned by computing and interpreting the return on equity for Sherwin-Williams.